Hello, is that better? Let's see if your audio is working. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, just give me a thumbs up or an indication in the comments if that's the sound now back on. Does seem to be okay, my side. Ah, better, yes, okay. Sorry about that. You know, what will go wrong will obviously go wrong. All right, so apologies for that. Um, let us prod on it yet again. Okay, so let me just get my little slideshow back. Okay, so just to reiterate, in case that info was lost, um, yeah, so this is the curved reflector, just more or less where you need to position it. And it's designed to bounce light um, from the main light or key light, whatever you want to call it. So this light is to redirect it from an upward angle back up at your model's face, just to provide a more so fuller fold-in look. So in other words, the shadows are just reduced a little bit by little bit. Um, judging by how much you want those shadows to be filled in, that depends on the, uh, the physical positioning of the reflector itself. So the higher the reflector, the more reflection, the lower the reflector, the less reflection. Just to give you an idea, you know, that's the lighting setup. So from the main light, so that is used as your main creative light, your main exposure light, but some of that light will redirect off the reflector just to bounce back up with your model's face. So a while ago, I used this as a test run. All right, so on the left-hand side, no reflector was used. On the right-hand side, reflector was indeed used. So you can see, quote unquote, it provides a fuller look. Um, so the, um, sorry, the shadows underneath the jawline, um, underneath the nose, and some, in, um, some of the shadows on the brow, so that is reduced little bit by little bit. Um, yeah, so it just falls in the shadows a wee bit. Here is another example. Okay, so just on left-hand side, no reflector was used. Right-hand side, reflector was indeed used. Now, uh, you may be asking, why do you want to use a curved reflector as opposed to just any standard reflector, a flat reflector, circular reflector, even a makeshift reflector? So the beauty of the curved reflector lies in the catch light. So the catch light is the little twinkle in the eye. It is also known as the eye light. So the catch lights are a direct reflection of the lights that you're using, including that of the reflector itself. So here you can see just a, a sloppily drawn <laughs> illustration here. So the key light here, uh, that is, well, the top key light, that is provided by the main light, and the bottom catch light, that is provided by the reflector itself. All right, just as a real life example, so you can see at the top there, that is the main light catch light, and at the bottom, that catch light is provided by the reflector itself. So the beauty of the curved reflector is that it provides a crescent-shaped or arc-shaped catch light. So that just enhances the shape of the iris itself. Um, so it looks a bit more natural as opposed to a circle reflector or rectangular reflector, which may look a bit um, out of place. So you can see here with these illustrations, with a curved reflector, you can see that crescent-shaped catch light just enhances the iris itself. It um, enhances the shape of the eyeball, whereas the circular, rectangular reflectors may just look a little bit out of place. So the catch light just looks um, just a bit more natural as opposed to any other type of reflector. So you can see here a couple of examples. In the top, no reflector was used, and in the bottom, a reflector was used. So that reflector does make the eyeballs pop, in a manner of speaking. So just to reiterate, so on the top, no reflector was used. And on the bottom, you can see the bottom catch light just enhancing the shape of the irises. Oh dear. Sorry if you can hear a dog barking. That is our new pug called Bouncer. Just getting used to the surroundings. All right, so <laughs> sorry about the dog. So the second reason you may um, want to use a curved reflector as well, it, because it provides reflection from multiple angles. So it's not just from a bottom up angle, it provides sideways, um, <laughs> as the comments roofing. Um, yeah, so it's a sideways um, reflection as well. 
So just so you see a illustration of that. So again, sloppily drawn illustration here using some random clip arts. But yeah, so you can see the light um, does reflect from multiple angles. So it provides an encompassing or a enveloping fill-in light. This is for a more so fuller look. So you have light going around the face, not just underneath the chin itself. So this also gives you a bit more playroom as far as the positioning of your key light is concerned. So if your key light is positioned off axis, so just a bit more to the side, um, some of that light will bounce back at your model's face from the opposite direction. So if you're using a flat reflector, some of that light may go wasted off the side. So just to reiterate, so you have a bit more playroom as far as the positioning of your key light or main light is concerned. So even if you place it off axis, some of that light will bounce back at your model space from the opposite direction. Uh, whereas with a flat direct, um, flat <laughs> reflector, sorry about that, some of that stray light just may go past your model. So you end up losing a bit of, or not utilizing all of the light. All right, so just to reiterate some points. So the curved reflector, that is to be used with any light source, um, be it a strobe, LED, or even a sunlight itself. And that is just to provide a bit of fill-in light. So the light from your key light will bounce off the reflector up an upward angle underneath the model's chin, and it will just fill the shadows in the eyebrows underneath the nose and around the jawline, just to provide a more so fill-in or fuller look. As discussed, with a curved reflector specifically, it enhances the shape of the eyes with the crescent-shaped catch lights. Okay, I see my face is in a way here. And because of the curved nature of this curved reflector, it reflects lights from multiple angles for a more so fuller fill-in light. Okay, let's talk about what you get in the box itself. So the box is comprised of, um, well, the inners are comprised of many aluminum parts. So this does require a bit of pre-assembly. Um, that is a bit of a bummer. Depending on how used you are to um, setting up this reflector, it may take anything between five to 10 minutes just to set up this reflector itself. Um, yeah, so if you're not using the reflector, if you push it to the corner somewhere, it does take up quite a lot of space. And I would say this is the only downfall, the only downside of this specific reflector is that it's quite chunky, it does take up a lot of space, and it's not easy to assemble and disassemble. Um, so once you have it up, you know, if you have the room for it, you can push it to the side, but otherwise, it's not the most portable, the most, you know, um, compact option available. Otherwise, what you get with a product is a tilt and lock bracket. So this allows you to tilt the bracket up and down for whatever desired result. And included, what you get are silver and white reflector fabrics. So there's a difference between the silver and the white. Uh, the silver provides a more so intense reflection, whereas the white is a more so modest amount of reflection. So the silver is great if you're using underpowered um, lighting and you need that extra bit of kickback. Uh, whereas for white, I would think is very useful with strobes, and the strobes are powerful enough. Okay, so this is what the product looks like from more so multiple angles, and on, also in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the many parts that you get with it. So it's a fairly large reflector. Um, it's 60 by 180 centimeters if you calculate the curve of it. Um, just to reiterate some points, um, the tilt and lock lever just allows you to tilt the bracket backwards and forwards. Um, but otherwise, it is something that you need to assemble and disassemble before and after use. All right, so do I have any questions so far? So this is a fairly short live. We're always talking about one product today, not a lot of products. So if you have any questions to ask about this um, reflector, please do so in the comments section. Get my face back. Okay, I'm just waiting for more questions. Okay, question from Kubus Riedlingeis. 
Question, if you move the reflector at a 45 or 90 degree angle, uh, do you have any examples? Okay, unfortunately, I don't have examples of that, but it's something I'll work on. Um, so instead of taking care of harsh shadows below the chin or nose, you rather emphasize it, but still light your model from, an other, from another angle. So I think the angle of the reflector itself depends on where your main light comes from. So um, how you want to play with your main light. So yes, you can provide a more so intense reflection. Um, now, if you angle it 45 degree, um, degrees um, in relation to your main light. So I think the angle just more or less depends on the um, positioning of your main lights instead. Oh, so it's a thing called the family of angles. So depending where your main light is, you just want to play with your reflector to get the most efficient amount of reflection on your model. But unfortunately, I don't have examples, but Quervis, I'll take you up on that. Okay, I see Quibus is loading another question. So please, if you have any other questions, please do ask them. So it's the reason why we do these live videos is to be interactive with you guys. So it was a fairly straightforward live. I'm just talking about one product. Um, the curved reflector, I would say, is great for the eye light, the catch light itself. So it just makes the eye pop in a more so natural um, way. And the curved reflector does bounce light from multiple angles. You know, so you can provide a more so, sorry, dog. <laughs> Sorry, that's just bouncer getting used to the environment, it's still barking at things. So the curved reflector just bounces light from multiple angles, so it just provides a more so full in, uh, full in light around the entire um, underneath the jawline. Loving the bouquet in the background. You know, we're setting up Christmas trees already. <laughs> From a horizontal angle, what would you recommend? Should the reflector be flat always? I have seen that. Um, I don't know if you're referring to using the reflector as a kind of a, um, a room light. I've seen that. So with a curved reflector placed behind a person just to provide a bit of room light around the edge of the jawline. So I don't know if that is what you're referring to. But should the reflector be flat always? Uh, no, so it just depends on where the other lights are. So you know, as I said, that's just uh, the playroom you have as far as the angles are concerned. So if you have the sun, for example, that is stuck in one position, not always, but you know, when you're shooting, you can't move the sun, in other words. So you want to um, play with the angle of the reflector itself to provide the most efficient um, reflection back at the model. All right, just waiting for more questions. Okay, as the questions are loading, I'm just gonna go through some of the same points again. Let's go back to slide one. All right, so as far as the positioning of the reflector is concerned, this is more or less where you want to place it in relation to the main light. Um, but ideally, if you want to create clamshell lighting or paramount lighting, the main light has to be on axis with the model. So um, on the same axis of the model, so you need to use a boom stand to get the light stand out of the way. But because of the curved reflector, you can move the main light slightly off axis to the side, and you'll still get that bounce back from the opposite angle. So this is the function of a fill-in light reflector. So it just bounces light off the key light. So the key light is used as your main exposure light, your main creative light. But if you want to provide a bit of fill-in light, that bottom reflector can be used just to bounce light back up at your model. So underneath the jawline, underneath the nose, in the brows. Um, and also depending on the amount of reflection that you want, that is dependent on the positioning of the reflector itself. So. The more you move it upwards, the more intense the reflection. The more you move it down, the less intense. Okay, 
So here you have your examples. So on the left-hand side, no reflector was used. On the right-hand side, reflector was used. So on the left-hand side, you can see the dark shadows, especially on what is our right-hand side, on the model's left-hand side, especially around the chin underneath the jawline and also underneath the hair as well. So with that reflector, because of the curved nature of it, it provides a more fuller fill-in light. So it provides fill-in light around the entire jawline. So more examples. Okay, so just to ask again, what are the differences between a normal curved reflector as opposed to a standard reflector? The curved reflector provides a more natural crescent-shaped or arc-shaped catch light in the iris, which looks a bit more natural and it enhances the shape of the iris itself. So here you can see a couple of examples. Well, first the illustration thereof, and of and a real life example. So the main light, uh, catch light, that is a reflection of the main light that you're using. So you can see the shape of the softbox right there. And you can also see the shape of the catch light provided by the reflector as well. So it looks a bit more natural, as said, um, as opposed to a circle reflector or a rectangular reflector, which does look a little bit out of place, whereas the curved reflector looks more so natural. Here you can see your two comparisons here as well. So top one, no reflector was used, and bottom one, reflector was indeed used. So you can see the catch light there in the bottom example. Also another reason why you want to use a curved reflector as opposed to a flat one is that the curved reflector, because of its curved nature, will provide reflection from multiple angles. So if you move your main light off center, um, it will bounce light back at your model from the opposite direction. As opposed to a flat reflector where some of that stray light may go past your model. Okay, so I think we've gone through these from um, same points already. Yeah, okay, I see another question. So I might have missed, is the curved reflector always silver or is there a white and gold option? So for one, we sell half the silver and white fabrics. So you can change the silver into the white. Um, but the difference being is that the white will provide a more so modest, warmer, softer reflection as opposed to the silver. But I think the silver is a good idea because if you're using white, the amount of reflection isn't the same. It's a bit less than that for silver. So if you're using white, you need to move the reflector more upwards at the model. That means the reflector may get in the frame itself, which is something you may need to crop out. So using the silver, you can drop the reflector a little bit more downwards and will provide the um, same intense reflection that you need. But in future, we are going to stock a four-in-one option so that allows you to change from silver, white, um, a golver, which is just a silver and gold zigzag pattern and a, a solid gold reflector option as well. So if you're willing to wait like two or three months, we would be getting those in soon from newer. But for the time being, we have the silver and white ones available as part of the same product. Something I forgot to mention is that the product standard doesn't come with the light stand. So, is, so a light stand, you need to buy extra. But if you shop at camera stuff, if you buy the two of them, the reflector and the stand, you get a bundle discount. And if you shop today still, you can get a Black Friday special as well. So from the 1st of December, we'll have our normal prices. But if you shop today still, you can get a 25% discount still. So let me just show you where to go if you want to shop. Okay, so here I am on a camera stuff web page. So you can just go to the search bar and just type in curved. I'll take you straight to the item. So here, here we have the two options. So we have curved reflector, the standard, no stand included. And here we have the bundle option. So for the bundle option, you get a discount. Just waiting for the picture to load. 
So here you have options as far as your stands are concerned. So standard, you get a 120 centimeter studio foot stand. If you want something a little bit taller, you can switch to a 1.9 or a 2.4. All of these stands are height adjustable, so you can move a reflector. If it is positioned on a light stand, you can move that up and down. Uh, between all of these options, I would recommend for 2.4. So if you're not using the reflector, you can use the 2.4 for something else, say lights or whatever lighting fixture that you may want to use. So just to reiterate, with this bundle, you get the reflector, you get a light stand, you can choose the type of reflector, oh, sorry, the type of light stand, should I say. Uh, there will be a price difference calculated depending on which one you use. Um, so the standard one is for 120 centimeter. If you find that a little bit too short, you can jump up to the 1.9. If you want something that you can use for other things as well, flash brackets, um, strobes, whatever it may be, I would definitely recommend for 2.4. So all of these light stands, height adjustable, as mentioned. Um, but it's always nice to have a bit of extra height when necessary. So between all of these options, my recommendation would be the 2.4. Okay, so you can just go to the website, type in curved in the search bar, and it will take you directly to these items. And from there, you can do your shopping. Or otherwise, you can come to the shop, camera stuff. We are based in Blair Gaudi. We have everything on demo. Um, if you want to test it out, you can do so as well. So you can bring your model, you can bring your strobe. Sorry, my dog is here. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can do that as well. So if you're willing or want to see the product do its thing live, you're welcome to come to the shop and yeah, have a look-see for yourself. So Quibus here with another question. Please elaborate on a specific light stand requirement. Um, so it's pretty much universal. So it has a universal fitting. So any other photographic light stand, you can even use the standard um, tripod as well. You just need a little spigot for the tripod. But otherwise, it's mostly a universal mount. Yeah, I just need to understand what the difference is with the stands I already have. Woof, woof, woof. Yes, hello, doggy. Yes, can. come here. No, doesn't want to come here. Um, with light stands, does it have a different mount? No, it's universal, as I said. So if you have a photographic light stand, if you're still a little bit skeptical, um, send us a photo of the top mount, and we can just confirm with you um, if it will be compatible. <laughs> Sorry, dog is barking yet. All right, so do we have any other questions? Okay, from my side, I'd just like to apologize for the lack of sound earlier. Um, a bit of a gremlin my side so very sorry about that all right so sonia asking sorry i missed it do you get a white as well or just silver so the one we sell is both so you get a white fabric you get a silver fabric it's just a case of switching the fabrics depending on which one you want to use so you do get both as part of the product All right, so if there are no further questions, I think that is basically it from my side. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you have any other questions to ask after the live has been done, um, please do so in the comment section. We hang out on Facebook very often, so we'll grab those questions, we'll answer them. Otherwise, you can go on a website. Let me show you quickly. Little speech bubble right here. So we have a live chat available, so you can chat to our, our friendly experts. So if you have any questions, you can do so live via the website itself. Otherwise, we are on WhatsApp too. Um, but beyond that, you can call us, we have email, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have any questions to ask, please do so. Um, 
you know, always willing to help out. But yeah, I think that's me. So thank you for joining me. Um, enjoy the rest of your night further. Um, so hopefully I've illuminated you regarding the um, curved reflector. Um, just what an awesome product it is. I'm pretty certain a lot of you may be convinced to buy one. But for myself, woof, woof, yes, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's something I've bought personally as well and it's something I'm going to use quite extensively from now on. But anyways, cheers, bye-bye. Hope you have a lovely night further. Bye-bye.